subjects na ito. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and praise the Lord for joining uh, everyone uh, who joined us ngayong umaga. Kasama po natin ngayon, and uh, tayo po ay magpapatuloy uh, sa ating discussion po ngayong umaga po mga kapatid. And uh, we will be talking on the infiltration of the scripture. And uh, that's the last time po nating pinag-usapan po mga kapatid, yung infiltration of the scripture. Last time po mga kapatid ay... Um, Teka, hasaglit lang. Oops, parang bumalik sa ayon. Okay, so... Uh, yung nakaraan po mga kapatid ay atin po itong... Uh, diniskas medyo ilang ilang ano din tayo no ilang araw din tayo na hindi po nakapag uh, nakapag I mean ilang Mondays din tayo hindi ata nakapag-discuss pero po mga kabatid ay um, mapatuloy po natin so we already discuss a lot of things dito po sa atin pong studies on the King James Bible we established already yung yung ano po mga kapatid already yung atin pong uh, mga topics like yung yung inspiration preservation and translation so diniskas natin yung relationship ng tatlo that they're inseparably linked together and um diniskas natin lengthily for how many months po mga kapatid yung tatlo and and finally we reach dito po sa infiltration ito po yung subtle attack ng jablo against okay sa word of god and uh, and itong sa infiltration na ito we learn a lot of things po mga kapatid dito sa infiltration we talk about from the beginning yung yung ano po mga kapatid yung yung present battle dito po over the scripture yung the battle over the scriptures na there is a reality na may labanan And we talk about yung two truths, if you still remember, that sets the battle po mga kapatid. And that, that, bakit may struggle na ganito? Because number one, because God promised to preserve His Word. And you know, the devil from the beginning is against it from back from the garden. But God promised mga kapatid to preserve His Word. And the devil is also there mga kapatid to try to challenge that. And uh, bakit may struggle? Number two, because men will always corrupt God's word. Yun po yun po mga kapatid. At ang nature ng tao, we're inclined to corrupt God's word. Ang ating flesh is inclined to corrupt God's word. That's why may ganun. So may mga wicked men na nagpapagamit sa jablo po mga kapatid that uh, nagiging conduit po sila sa attempt ng jablo on how to destroy the word of God. But you know, the promise of God will stand still still will stand strong and will stand the same amen and it can god cannot lie and the promise is the promise and so it is now the obligation and the responsibility of god because he's the one who said it that he is going to keep his word the bible says um doon the words of the lord are pure words are a silver tried in furnace of earth purified Seven times, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So, yun, kita, malinaw po mga kapatid na ganun po, no? Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. So, ang Diyos mismo ang magkikip and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So, yun ang nangyayari, no? So, we talk about also yung, yung, yung present battle natin ngayon na nangyayari na dati, Dati, there used to be a time na ang labanan po mga kapatid is they try to threaten the believers by burning them at stake. Those who believe the Bible, they burn them at stake. Ngayon, we live in a time of liberty where there is no more burning at stake. Mga kapatid, wala ng mga inquisition ng mga, ng mga nangyayari sa mga saints and we're thankful sa mga saints before us na kaya nagkaroon tayo ng salita ng Diyos it's because uh, it cost their lives po mga kapatid ng mga martyrs pero ngayon mas lalong lumalala ang digmaan hindi man sa physical realm hindi man sinusunog ang Bible page by page we live in a day and time where, where there is burning of the Bible word by word yun po yung experience natin yan Paano, how did the Bible burn being burned word by word by the modern versions 
by the ano mga corrupt versions they try to produce a a version po mga kapatid na kulang-kulang ang verse na may additional ang verse na may mga mga nilalagay po na mga hindi po kasama dapat sa pure word of god so yun po yung nangyayari po mga kapatid so let's be careful at yan po ang nature ng labanan po natin it is now a, an a subtle attack by producing a a version mga kapatid that adds subtract diminish perverts and change the word of god okay so we look at how the devil attacked through the slithering serpent i'm giving you a, a quick review no through the slithering serpent you know the serpent that's always been his his ano po is used to conforming things to fit he conforms so that he will fit mga kabatid so he slither so uh, ibig sabihin his entrance is subtle his entrance is we unknowingly pumapasok siya na hindi natin na malaman po mga kabatid yun po ang nangyayari so and that's what the 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 ano po the the serpent can do it can be long ang serpent it can be circular and it can assume any shape and it can twist and it can also turns and sliding around the corner it can be wise just like what the bible says and it can be smooth talkers and subtle in his ways amen and that's how the devil or the serpent is subtlety just, just like sabi dun bible sa bible no beware lest any man men beguile you amen as the serpent beguiled Eve remember that as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so this is the slithering serpent at when and the slithering serpent po mga kapatid once na ma-expose siya he will just slither away and he will start to lurk in once again po mga kapatid so ganun po pag ma-expose po siya he will slither away and uh for example po mga kapatid the serpent has kept slithering and he kept also sliding smoothly every time he is spotted he was spotted po mga kapatid when every when the errors of the modern versions like the revised version like the the ano po mga kapatid RSV the NRSV ASV ASV NASB at lahat pa ng SBSB NIV and lahat ng new new So bakit ang dami po mga kapatid? Because every time they produce such versions, they're always spotted. At na 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 booking po sila po mga kapatid at nagsislider. Ibig sabihin, yung mga modern English modern versions ngayon na tinapat po sa King James Bible have been exposed po mga kapatid by this 400 year old book mga kapatid na ginagamit pa rin. So but the serpent keep on changing and changing. It wiggles and it slither as it where it moves as uh, every time it is it was exposed it is exposed po mga kapatid a new perversion have gone running and hiding but this time the devil has has a plan b at meron po siyang panibagong attack po mga kapatid and this time it's no longer effective yung mga NIV na exposed na po yun sa mga churches karamihan sa mga especially sa Baptist churches bumalik po sila sa King James Bible pero meron pong Meron pong ano ang jablo, scheme ang jablo na hindi nila namalayan po mga kapatid na nagiging effective po ito at unaware po sila, na caught up po sila unaware na meron pong nag-crept in unaware sa kanilang mga pulpit, sa kanilang mga churches at hindi man siguro sila gumagamit ng mga modern versions like the NIV, ASV, gumagamit man siguro sila ng King James and their King James user But there is a new style that the devil is trying to lurk in that they are unaware of. And this time, it is what we call from what the Bible says, they now say, the Greek says, the Hebrew says. So ganun na po mga kapatid. That's how they slide po mga kapatid. From the Bible says to the Hebrew says to the Greek says. It's no longer the NIV says. Wala na, hindi na yun effective. Exposed na yan. Pero there is this subtle attack that churches and preachers are in gross about right now po mga kapatid itong usage ng quote unquote greek and hebrew so instead the bible becomes their final authority it's now the, this dead language and dead bible na hindi na ginagamit hindi na po maintindihan din ng mga tao and they try to crept it in and try to ano po divert our attention 
on on the language mga kapatid that we don't understand <clears throat> on a language that has not been used already for centuries mga kapatid at ngayon po mga kapatid gusto nilang i-insert at hindi nila malayan that by saying that they are correcting the English or the Bible so there is now an outright correction it's no longer the correction is no longer on the new versions the 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 the, the mistakes is no longer on the versions that they're reading but their corrections and mistakes that and their attack now is right from the pulpit right from the pulpit po makatid, by saying that the king james has mistranslated dito sa isang verse na ito because the greek word of this word or the hebrew word of this word is this so they are now attempting to correct mga kapatid by their mouth yun na po mas malala po at ngayon, sanay na sanay sila. That's why they study Hebrew, they study Greek because they thought that they could not understand the Bible without learning those language. And most of them study those things so that they could correct the perfect words of God. So yun po ang problema sa atin po mga kapatid. Nagkaroon po ng tinatawag nating shift ng authority po mga kapatid. Itong plan B po na ito, nagkaroon po ng, ng shift po mga kapatid. And the serpent has changed. His style have changed. Its skin have changed. Yung skin niya. You know, the, the, the serpent, one of the qualities of the serpent, it can, it can, remember this, it can change its skin for a completely new look, mga kapatid. It can change, mga kapatid. But uh, from, from this old type na pag-produce the modern versions, going back to the original, Going back to the original, the original says, or the Hebrew says, the book says, that's the old, that's the old serpent. But regardless how he changed, regardless how he changed its skins and styles and approach, it's still the old serpent. It's still the old, old serpent. And that is the thing that he hide behind. At yan po ang tactic palagi ng jablo. Yung he will hide behind. He will see to it na hindi halata na nanggagaling sa kanya. He will see to it na ang, ang mga bagay na ito ay hindi siya mapagbintangan. Pero siya po yun mga kapatid. And let's be careful po dahil yun po ang style po ng jablo po na, na ito. And he, he try, attempted to have a brand new look. He attempted to have this new trail. But it's still the same old serpent. It's still the same old serpent po mga kapatid. And uh, Proverbs chapter number 30 verse number 19 The Bible says doon po mga kapatid that the way of the serpent is upon a rock. The way of the serpent is upon a rock. That is to say po mga kapatid, if the, the trail of the serpent is upon the rock, therefore you could, there will be no more trace. There will be no more traces mga kapatid that you could see. It is unspotted. Makikita mo natin, hindi obvious na may dumaan diyang serpent. Because it's upon the rock po mga kapatid. Pero kung sa dust po siya dumaan or kung sa isang sand po siya dumaan, at least meron pong mga mark. Pero pag upon the rock po mga kapatid, that speaks of subtlety sa kanya pong mga pamamaraan po mga kapatid. It leaves no mark mga kapatid. And this, this fiery serpent, makikita po natin, it returns and lurks around. He go back to the original, the Greek tree of knowledge or the Hebrew of tree of knowledge of doctors and scholars. Yeah, ganun po ang nangyayari po mga kapatid. Let's be careful. And in this attack, ito yung way niya ng infiltration. Hindi na obviously magpo-produce siya, but rather he infiltrated among those who use the King James Bible. He infiltrated, but this time is a far deeper level In a far deeper level po mga kapatid, he crept in unawares. Sa mga Bible colleges, sa mga churches, sa mga pulpits po natin, although they say they use the King James Bible, but in their preachings, in their teachings, they will criticize and say there is mistake on this, this there is a mistranslation on this, and there is a mistranslation on that po mga kapatid. At makikita po natin, yun po mga kapatid. That's how he infiltrated. So among sa mga King James sister by casting doubt and casting unbelief sa isipan at sa puso ng bawat mananampalataya po mga kapatid. And that's always been his ways po mga kapatid. And let's be very careful po mga kapatid. And I'm telling you, 
His plan B, His working. Amen. This plan B is effectively working now. Amen. If you study in a Bible college, po, mga kapatid, they will teach you this course of Greek and Hebrew, but not to believe the Bible, but they will teach you unbelief. They will teach you to doubt the Word of God, and they will teach you how to correct the Bible. And that is evident in their subjects on hermeneutics, subject on this in this in this language, po, mga kapatid, that they studied maybe one one semester or two semesters ng kanila pong ang um, kanila pong ano po mga kapatid kanila pong ng subject or course of bible school tapos at the end they will end up correcting the bible and they think that they know much they think that they're better than the king james translators and they they think that that truly that parang alam na alam po nila po mga kapatid that's that's what's going on right now po mga kapatid they entered mga kapatid sa isang bible school with with a with a belief with a sem, simple belief in their heart and mind that uh, this is the the word of, the bible that they're holding is the word of god but they graduated mga kabatid they graduated from that bible school or bible college bible institute amen with a different view now that there is mistake on the word of god that the king james is not perfect it's not preserved it's not yun po natutunan nila so could you imagine pupunta ka supposedly to study the bible sa isang bible school amen but you you graduated doubting the bible that you used to believe yun po ang nagiging effect po ng ano po na ito ng infiltration po ng jablo po na ito po mga kapatid and uh, let's be careful. Nagkaroon po ng great shift of authority. Nagkaroon talaga ng great shift of authority. And um, ito pong minsan iniisip po natin po mga kapatid na, 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 na ano na po eh. Ito from the voice of God to the voice of the strangers. Supposedly they are to listen to the voice of God through His word. They are now listening to the voice of the strangers. To the voices of strangers. You know? Itong voices ng strangers na ito, they are not of God, they are not messengers of God, but they are maybe commentator, maybe they're the one who proposed the, the so-called mistakes na sinasabi po nila. And the, the child of God ought not to listen to them. But the reality is, yun ang nangyayari. From the voice of God to the voice of strangers. They even listen to these voices of strangers na they are not really ano po, uh, uh, permitted by the, in the Bible and they're not warranted in the Bible and they're extra biblical revelation. Lalabas lang sila na nagpakita daw ang Panginoon sa kanila. Kinausap daw sila ng Panginoon. These are voices of strangers. Remember this, God could not talk to any one of us right now except through His Word. There is no such as extra biblical communication of God. There is no communication of His will. There is no communication of His ano po, instruction outside from the Bible. Don't you dare listen sa mga taong nagkiklaim na kinausap siya ng Panginoon outside sa Bible po mga kapatid. Na naginip daw siya, nagkaroon daw siya ng vision. That is not true po mga kapatid. Because once the Bible is complete, there will be no more revelation of Him. And all the complete revelation is through the Word of God. And listen to the voice of God through God's Word and not outside the Word of God. And outside the Word of God, these are voices of the strangers. That's how cult started. You see that? That's how cult started. They started by telling the people, by making the people believe that God showed up, God told them that God says this and that, mga kapatid. But in and the reality is, God was never really talking to them po, mga kapatid. Amen. God was never really talking to them outside from the Word of God. But they claim, then they start a religion, then they start something. You, that's how cults started. But, mga kapatid, that's what happened today. And the people, amen, shifted on listening from the voice of God to the voice of the strangers. And that's very, very, ano po mga kapatid, sad in our time and days. And even, even sa mga churches natin po ngayon po mga kapatid, instead the people will listen to the voice of God when the preacher will preach everything out from the word of God and this preacher will start to have another form of voice by telling, oh, there's mistake on this book. 
and the, the Greek says of this book or the Hebrew says on, on this word and, and this is supposed to be translated in this and this is the meaning and uh, the, the King James is mistaken on this and translation this so, you know ang mga voices mark of those voices mark those voices mark those voices because that's the type of the voice of the strangers mga kapatid and be careful po mga kapatid from what ito na ang nangyayari from what the Bible says to to what the Greek says from supposedly from conviction then going to unbelief po mga kapatid and from literal interpretation they now lurk on allegorical on a private interpretation po mga kapatid and from a doctrinal to traditional approach from the doctrinal nagiging traditional na po from theological to humanistic approach po mga kapatid from every word to general thought. So marami po, marami pong mga marami pong mga ano po mga kapatid, marami pong um uh, uh, ginagawa, no? So bi, le, sabi ng Bible, woe unto lawyers. Okay? Who have not ano who take away the key of knowledge. So the Bible says, who take away the key of knowledge from the people. Ito yung ginagawa po ng mga tao behind. Later on we'll be talking on the men behind the smoke screen po mga kabadet ito yung ginagawa ng mga men behind this yung mga evil who who are who are behind these things po mga kabadet and they 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 take away the key of knowledge from the people and what is that key of knowledge mga kabadet by believing that we need every word po mga kabadet and they'll say oh wala naman yan wag mong gawin yan wag mong basahin yan kasi ano lang yan hindi naman yan mistranslation naman yan original lang ang perfect and many they They, they took away the key of knowledge. You know, that's what they're doing, po mga kapatid. In Luke chapter number 8, in Luke chapter number 8, the Bible says, Then the, cometh the devil, then cometh the devil, and take away the word. Do you see that? And cometh the devil, and take away the word. So that's what happened, po mga kapatid. It's been the devil's business, it's been the devil's job, mga kapatid, taking away the word. Mga kapatid. So nagnanakaw and the Bible says God is is ano po mga kapatid is angry with those who pervert their words his words mga kapatid he perverts his word who who steal his words amen from men at yun po ang ginagawa po ng ng ano po na ito ah. that's the activity of the devil by using greek and all of that hebrews whatever pero one thing we discover in the series that they are not actually this most of these people that are saying that Greek, Hebrew, and all of that, mga kapatid, they are not actually reading and quoting most of them. I'm saying most of them, the Greek Bible or the Hebrew Bible. But one thing they are using that they are not telling you, they are just using the lexicons, the Greek and Hebrew lexicons. And um, kinuha lang yun sa mga lexicons like yung strong concordance. Meron pong mga lexicons po sa likod or dictionary ng Greek and Hebrew. Kumuha lang po sila doon. Yun po yung reality. That's one thing they, they never told us po mga kapatid na hindi naman pala kung bigyan mo ng Greek Bible yun mga kapatid they could not read Greek and bigyan mo ng Hebrew Bible they don't even know where to open the, the Hebrew Bible and they could not read they could not write they could not speak Hebrew and Greek actually so they sound scholarly kasi, kasi because of that ano po na mga pambulaklak na pananalita But they're empty vines. Amen. They, they don't know about that. But they're using lexicons. Lexicons, these are the Greek lexicons and the Hebrew lexicons. These are dictionaries po mga kapatid ng from English to Greek. And they will say, example, yung word na inspiration. So hanapin nila yung word na inspiration at sasabihin nila at ang ipakita doon, it means Theopneustus. Then, ita translate sa Greek. You imagine that from from English to Greek to English. 
these are the these are yung Greek lexicon na ginagawa po nila mga kapatid from English word to Greek word ibabalik sa English. Ang mangyayari po mga kapatid, the English word is inspiration. Tapos ang Greek word ay theopneustos kumbaga, theopneustos. At ang translation ng theopneustos is sep- is different from the inspiration. It means God breed. So ibig sabihin ng ganun po mga kapatid in the middle nagiba na so inspiration and god breed in inspiration daw means god breed because according to the greek so the one that defines the word now it is now it is now the lexicon rather than the context rather than the bible itself yun ang mangyari at anong pro, anong weakness ng lexicon they are man made dictionaries they are not the word of god so ang nagbigay sa atin ng definition is not actually god but it's men it's people So that's the weakness of that po mga kapatid. And they will make us believe. So ibig sabihin, ah, may, may other deeper meaning pa pala sa word na ito. So yun po ang problema po mga kapatid. So ang magiging bida now. Yun si, so ibig sabihin, ang papalabas nila na ah, ito po yun. So ito po yung ibig talagang sabihin yan. So the one that spoken all those things appears to be scholarly, appears to be learned men, appears to be learned men in Greek or in Hebrew because he could say that. But the truth of the matters, the reality is that he was just using the lexicon. I, I, I had a preaching before. The title is Hush, You Don't Speak Greek. It's one of the conferences that I, I talk about. I, 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 I don't know if I could still remember. I think that's somewhere in the north, mga kapatid. And I titled that Hush, You Don't Speak Greek. In my early younger years, mga kapatid, you don't speak Greek. So yun po ang sasabihin natin, tahimik lang, you don't speak Greek. So mamaya, we will have approaches kung paano po natin i-confront ang mga tao po na yun po mga kapatid na gumagamit po ng ganun po mga kapatid, na pamamaraan. And then they attempt to correct the word of God po mga kapatid. Okay, so we studied also the lex- the, about the lexicons, kung anong lexicon and And uh, actually, they, they, these Greek grammars, these lexicons na sinasabi po nila, tinuturo nila, do not teach really you the Bible, but they teach you unbelief po mga kapatid. Ito yung parang virus po mga kapatid that contaminates sa ating mga churches. Ito yung nag-infiltrate na pinasok nila sa atin na without us knowing, it contaminates our spiritual life, it lowers our immunity to heresy, it opens up some uh, some ano po mga kapatid, some mindset and some wrong doctrines and heretical teachings sa ating mga churches if we are not careful. Kaya lagyan mo kaagad ng mark yung mga taong gumagamit ng ganun tapos they end up correcting the Bible po mga kapatid. And uh, these lexicons are just Bible dictionary And many of them, it contains guesswork, po, mga kapatid. And they are just, these, these are, of course, written by men. And they are generally based on other dictionaries or other lexicons. And most of their definition are even not even used, mga kapatid, or obsolete. And mga kapatid, and sometimes, ito mga lexicons na ito were just taken, not really from God or from the Bible, but taken, some of them are from other translations and from Bible commentaries. Sometimes when you use this Greek Hebrew lexicon, you are just as if reading the NIV, reading the ASV, or this modern version. So these modern versions appear na go, hindi mo alam na nag-entertain ka ng modern version although gumagamit ka, ng, gumagamit ka ng King James. Pero hindi mo alam na as you go to these lexicons, itong mga komentar, uh, yung kinuhanan po natin ay galing lang pala sa commentaries at sa mga previous Bible translations po mga kapatid as if so may careful because the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter number 2 verse number 17 itong words to no prophet mga kapatid na sinasabi sa verse 14 mga kapatid will eat us doth a conquer okay and the word will eat us doth a conquer so yun po yun eh yun po ang salita nila eh ang salita ng Diyos, mga kapatid, what the word of truth can build you up. But these words na sinasabi na tinuturo will eat as that a conquer. So it's like a conquer worm slowly eating the believer. Amen. At hanggang such time na wala na. Akala mo wala ng pure word of God, perfect word of God na totally makonsume po tayo. And many times I said that this word na conquer is come from the conquer worm na kumakain po mga kapatid. And that's where they get That's where they get po mga kapatid, the word cancer. 
from the word conquer po mga kabadad. Okay? So, kinakain po. It lowers our immunity and it destroys the believer. That's how the devil has been successfully penetrating and infiltrating po sa atin pong mga sa atin pong panahon po mga kapatid. Let's be very careful and we are bold enough po mga kapatid to tell us that mga tell you that mga kapatid. So, we studied about where where uh we, when it comes to the in, insider secrets okay of the lexicographers. We studied about that. I have read about you their quotes kung paano po nila yung mga insider secret ang mga lexicographer mismo nagsasabi that they cannot be certain mga kapatid of their definitions na binigay sa mga lexicons na ginagawa po nila and marami sa kanila ay ay mga mga ano po mga kapatid mga obsolete na yung mga meaning some of the testimonies they're saying sa atin that ang lexicographer or lexicography yung pagkagag paggawa ng mga dictionaries na Greek Hebrew Uh, uh, sa Bible po mga kapatid is more than it's it's more of an art it is more of an art rather than a craft so they sacrifice yung truthfulness sa sa ano lang po because of art so yun po yung kadalasan po diyan eh po mga kapatid alam niyo example example yung mga I, i'm not against alliteration I, hindi ako against nag nag alliterate hindi lang ako palagi nagpi-preach ng alliteration po mga kapatid, walang ganun or I'm not against that pero may mga pastors na talagang alliterated ang mga preaching some of them ay nabibless ako some of them po mga kapatid na observe ko na tinitwist pinipilit po mga kapatid para lang magswak ay eh, ibig kong sabihin na alliteration pag ang point number one mo nagstart sa P so P na yan kung 15 points P lahat yan pero ang problema po mga kapatid hindi man nagsaswak po mga kapatid ang nangyayari na sacrifice yung word na heavy word i-change mo into para lang magswak sa gusto mong lahat mag-start ng letter P or lahat mag-start letter R kahit malayo na ang sense because you are more of the art rather than the real ano po meat ang habol nila ma ma maswak sa art so mo para maging artistic para ma sound pakinggan maganda pakinggan so that's why igaganon po mga kapatid by the way ang bible may alliterations may mga mga words na nagse-start ng ganito So, pero ang iba talaga, yun na talaga ang style po mate. I respect and uh, praise God sa mga ano po na yan, pero of course, yung may mga talagang pinipilit lang na wala naman talaga, di naman talaga dapat po mga kapatid. Forcing the issue. Uh, ang dating tuloy para ng craft rather than yung truth na nailayo na sa real sense ng truth po mga kapatid. Okay? So, let's be very careful. Ganun ang nangyayari po sa lexicon. At ito po yung mga sinasabi ng mga lexicographers. Para lang kahit hindi nang yun ang, ang parang accurate niya na meaning just for the sake of art. Alam niyo po, para sa poetry po mga kapatid, it's more of an art. Yung mga poetry, it's more of an art. Kaya mahirap mag-literal interpretation sa poetry. Bakit? Ang habol ng poetry po, kadalasan po mga kapatid, is more than the truth. But ang kadalasang habol po nila mga kapatid, mag-rhyme lang. Okay, may rhythm at saka rhyme, may pattern po mga kapatid, mag-rhyme lang para maiswak po sa kanilang gusto. Pero mahirap iintindihin, mahirap iano, basta nagra-rhyme, okay na yun, poetry na po yun. So yun po ang yun po ang nangyayari po kadalasan sa mga poetry ginawa ng tao po mga kapatid. Ganito din ang sa lexicon, it's more of an art rather than a craft. Okay, so marami po sila that sabi nila po that sila mismo nagsasabi si John A. Lee, isa pong lexicographer, he said that that uh, what he's done so far cannot be relied on. That's their confession, that's their insider secret. Sila nakakaalam at sinasabi niya po mga kapatid, there are mistakes of the past mga kapatid that we cannot know for certain that what we find in front of us when we look up in a word is sound because kadalasan nito yung mga yung mga gaps, yung mga lapses, yung mga mistakes ay kasi since nag-plagiarize lang naman sila, kinopya lang din sila nila ang kanilang mga lexicon from their predecessors or sa mga nauna sa kanila, kaya pati mali na kokopya po nila po mga kapatid. Kaya yun ang nangyayari po mga kapatid sa mga lexicons na ito. An ordinary user mga kapatid has no means of knowing where the mistakes have been made. Wala, walang kaalam-alam eh. 
yung mga nagsasabi lang na gumagamit ng mga oh the greek word of this of this word it means ganito so they don't even know they said that that ito pong mga tao na ito na nagoyo lang pala sila sa mga lexicographers or hindi nga nila alam kung saan ang mistakes where the ignorance had been covered mga kapatid and elsewhere because they they don't have capacity to check and to correct mga kapatid whether whether tama ba yung word na yun na pagka-render o hindi para safe po mga kapatid wag ka lang pumunta doon we have here the book mga kapatid amen and uh, this is perfect this is complete po mga kapatid and sufficient mga kapatid so hindi nila alam that because many of these lexicographers has conceal many sins mga kapatid mga indecision compromise mga guesswork mga kapatid and above all yung mga dependence nila sa kanilang mga nauna sa kanila yung mga predecessors po nila po mga kapatid kaya yun po eh kaya lang problema hindi alam ng mga gumagamit nito kung saan ang mali at kung paano but anyway <laughs> they use the lexicon to correct the bible at yun naman ang problema mas lalong naging problematic po mga kapatid. Kaya kadalasan po nito galing sa Jerome Bolgate. Yun po ang kadalasan nilang standard. So ibig sabihin, kung gumagamit ka ng lexicon, parang bumabalik ka din sa mga corrupt versions. Kasi kung galing lang naman sa mga Bible commentary ang iba or galing sa mga other Bible translation, kung galing sa Jerome Bolgate po yun po mga kapatid, that's a corrupt Latin Catholic Bible po mga kapatid, yung Jerome Bolgate. And hindi po galing ang King James Bible po doon po mga kapatid. Amen. So marami po. Na, ganun po. That's the insider secret of the lexicographer po mga kapatid. So ano, anong, anong ano po natin doon po mga kapatid? Uh, anong masasabi natin doon? At ito yung mga mali. Ito yung mga may problema po mga kapatid. Hindi po to dapat gawin nating standards. Hindi po datin dapat gawin na basihan ng truth. But the only uh, um, ano po mga kapatid, objective standard for the truth is this book, is the Bible. And it should not be outside. Let us not, according to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21, let us not meddle on things that are given to change. We're told in the Bible, meddle not on the things that are given to change. So wag kang makisawsaw, wag kang wag kang magdepend, wag kang maki-join, partake sa mga bagay na pabago-bago or given to change. Nagbabago po mga kapatid. This book is this this is unchanging. Kahit magbago man ang kanyang ang kanyang ang kanyang language but the same truth ang content ang content po niya. Hindi siya nagbabago. Do not ano po do not do not do not do not go sa isang isang bagay let me let me read i think that's in that is in judges chapter number 17 do not meddle let me read in judges 17 para makita po natin in verse number 6 let me read judges 17 verse number 6 the bible says in those days there was no king in israel but every man did that which was right in his own eyes i'd like you to take note that every man did which was right in his own eyes so mga kapatid do not meddle sa mga bagay materials mga kapatid na ginawa ng isang tao na wala pong objective basis or standards mga kapatid na ginawa lang po niya, okay, based on what he think is right. Yun ang nangyayari. Yun ang nangyayari sa mga lexicons. Eh. Many base their faith without them knowing that they already base their faith on understanding the Word of God on the lexicon which was based on what those lexicographers think is right in their own eyes and they have no objective standard whatsoever they have no objective basis ng truth po mga kapatid but when they it contains guesswork mga kapatid therefore kung anong sa tingin nilang tama sa paningin nila then they will write it and you will say it is from God and you will say that it is this is what God says that's yun ang problema po mga kapatid that's one thing that they never told us and that's the infiltration that we're talking about 
That's the infiltration really po mga kapatid. And let's be very careful po mga kapatid on those things. Amen. We have to understand that and uh, should not should not be meddling on those things. Okay? So, yun po eh. Uh, they keep on changing. They keep on revising. And, and it, it contains guesswork and all of that. And these are what I call the hazardous materials. They're hazardous materials. And they're very, very dangerous po mga kapatid. Mga bagay po na ito. And where do... Where do these lexicons come from? Saan ba galing itong mga dictionaries na ito? Of course, it's just plagiarism from earlier dictionaries. Kinopia lang din yan sa mga early dictionaries. We have Miriam, for example. Miriam Webster's. It was just a copy from his grand great-grandfather. Si Noah's Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Then they, they add something new. To suit kung ano yung mga modern language. Ganun lang yun mga kapatid. Or eliminate some of those what we called obsolete or what we called archaic. So ganun lang. So yan, ganun din ang Greek at saka Hebrew Dictionary. So kung, kung may mistakes man doon, maipasa din sa kanila. So pasahan lang ng mistakes po mga kapatid. At again, I tell you again that yung mga normal na mga readers, mga kapatid, has no idea kung alin ang mali, kung ano ang mistakes po mga kapatid. Yun po eh. So we, we learned also that it comes from Bible versions and it comes from commentaries and even yung mga short dictionaries or short synonym dictionaries po mga kapatid. So it's based on that mga kapatid. Even yung chapters on Vines Concordance or Vines Greek ano po, lexicon and Strong's Concordance mga kapatid or Strong's Dictionary of the Greek and Hebrew demonstrate mga kapatid that, that their definition mamaya pag-usapan natin si James Strong no that their definition po mga kapatid are just based on the revised version it came directly from the revised version kaya if you read the if you read yung dictionary sa likod ng Strong's Concordance you are just like reading the RV the revised version because yung English definition niya doon sa isang quote-unquote Greek word po doon was taken from the revised version. Ganun lang po yun mga kapatid. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka nga gumagamit ng, ng modern version, gumagamit ka nga ng King James Bible, but when you define when you define the meaning or the words of the King James Bible, you go back, amen, you go back to the modern version, you sing, you sing these ano po mga kapatid, mga lexicons. Yun po ang problem po mga kapatid na dapat nating pansinin. Okay? So that's that's where the problem it comes from from Latin, of course Jerome Vulgate po mga kapatid to German, then German to English. So you see na, so ang daming language na dinadaanan po mga kapatid. So as language goes on, ma, yun ang problema yan. Bantayan po natin po mga kapatid. It comes from the Little Scot Little and Scott Greek lexicon. So we will talk about Henry Little. Okay, Henry Little. Pag-usapan po natin yan. Galing po yan. That's yung kanya pong Little Scott Greek lexicon. That's the mother of all harlot. That's the first, ano po mga kapatid, Greek English lexicon. Okay, dyan galing ang lahat ng mga lexicon. Dyan binasiyan ni Strong's, ni Vines, mga kapatid. At marami pang mga lexicographers po mga kapatid. Diyan binasihan po ni ano po mga kapatid, ni Tyre ang kanya pong mga definition. So ang pinaka-source nila, the first ever Greek-English lexicon is the Little Scott lexicon. So that's, that's their mother of all harlot po mga kapatid. Na doon sila pinanggalingan. So ang mistakes doon din galing. Hindi na na malaya, naipasa lang po mga kapatid. Ngayon, nasa pulpito na natin. Nasa mga churches na, sa mga Bible schools na po mga kapatid. Ang mga bagay na ito. Amen. This is little, amen, Scott Greek lexicon po mga kapatid. And that is the first Greek English lexicon. And pansinin po niyan, they, according to the lexicographer, they heavily rely on it mga kapatid. And uh, you observe that mga kapatid. And it came... Saan galing pa ang pinaka-source? It came from pagan Greeks. Ito yung mahirap. 
So not only you are exposed to modern version when you use this lexicon, you are also exposed to pagan Greeks. Kasi yung mga gamit nila na language po mga kapatid, na Greek ay Homeric Greek. Ibig sabihin, galing pa sa mga kay Homer po mga kapatid. And you know who Homer is. Siya yung author ng itong mga Greek mythology ng mga gods and goddesses. So you will be introduced with gods and goddesses na mga language na mga pagan Greek mga kapatid. You will be introduced with with some witchcraft, with, with some ano po mga kapatid, na mga non-Christian, non-Jewish na mga words mga kapatid. Yun po ang problema dyan eh. Dyan man sila galing kumukuha eh, mga kapatid. And we, they start now to consult these godless ancient Greek authors like Plato, like Herodotus, mga kapatid, like, like Homer, like, uh, like Sophocles, and many more, like Socrates, like, ano po, mga kapatid, like, like si, si, uh, si, um, I have this in mind, si, si Aristotle. So, you know, yun po nagiging problema. So, ma-introduce ka ng mga gano'n, ng mga non-Christian, non-Jewish, ng mga terminologies. And when you, when you go to this Greek lexicon, Hebrew lexicon, you go back to them. That's where lexicon came from. And we need to, to understand that, mga kapatid. That's why we're told, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, mga kapatid. So, of course, It comes also from the Catholic Church fathers like like ano po mga kapatid Irenaeus like Clement like Origen mga kapatid and you know all roads amen all roads lead to Rome Go anong ginagawa mo not only you go back to Greek to the pagan Greek not only you go back to the modern versions when you are also using these lexicons, you go back to, to your road is leading you back to Rome. It's where it all began. It's where all of this, mga kapatid. You go back and you're engaged with this mother of all harlot po, mga kapatid. Sa lahat ng mga bagay na ito. And you're introduced with other heretics. So, hindi natin alam. So, we, we use some Roman terms. Roman Catholic terms na hindi mo namamalayan. Ito, ito yung strong ano po na ito po mga kapatid. Careful sa mga instead of going back to the Bible, you go back to Rome. Amen. One, our, 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 um, yung late Dr. Rockman po mga kapatid said, if you don't go back to the Bible, sabi niya, you go back to the jungle. If you don't go back to the Bible, you go back to the jungle. I'll tell this. If you don't go back to the Bible, you go back to the modern version, you go back to, to the pagan Greeks, and you go back to Rome. Amen. And of course, it comes from the secular, okay, Egyptian, papery. So dun po ito nang galing. Balik ka sa Alexandria. And sa Alexandria po mga kapatid, yun po yung mga source ng mga Alexandria, Egypt. Yan po yung source ng modern version. Yun yung pinaka-mainstream po mga kapatid ng mga corrupt versions na meron tayo. Ang, that is an Alexandrian text. We have an Antioctian text. The received text is an Antioctian text. But itong mga modern versions po mga kapatid, ito po yung mga corrupt versions ay galing po Alexandrian text. So saan galing po ito? So ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, when you go back ano po mga kapatid, When you go back to lexicon, you go back also. It leads you to Egypt, back to Egypt, back to Alexandria, where all the corruptions is coming from. Where all the modern ano po, corruption. Tapos, hindi natin na malayan. And you know, Egypt is always the type of the world in the Bible. And you, you guess what? You, you just have that secular, amen. You just have received that secular knowledge and secular definition po mga kapatid. There's what we call Alexandrian philosophy. There's what we call Alexandrian occultism. There's what we call the Alexandrian scholarship. And there's what we call the Alexandrian text na pinag-usapan natin. Again, I'll tell you, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Amen. Amen. So, now, these are now the men that behind. There, mga kapatid, few lang tong 
iningnan natin kasi sobrang dami po mga kapatid. At ito yung mga men behind the smoke screen. Behind, behind the, the, the lexicons, men behind na nagpapalabas po nito ng mga corrupt ano, that contaminated churches natin po mga kapatid. And be careful with this. And you need Bible believers, Christians should be informed who are these men. And we should be informed with their works. We should be informed sa kanila pong ginagawa po mga kapatid and how they infiltrated Christendom. Christianity po mga kapatid in our time and age without us knowing. Because infiltration nga nangyayari. These, these are mga nakapasok na within the Christian circles, within our churches, even in our pulpits po mga kapatid. It's something ang gagawin natin. We are a counterintelligence. We will now be acting as counterintelligence. We are going to expose these who already infiltrated po mga kapatid. I remember between the Cold War, I don't know if you if you are fond of history but i'm i'm i am fond of history po mga kapatid and um i i i always watch if there are documentary films or mga, mga film with regards dito po mga kapatid i meron po mga counter intelligence na i remember one time po mga kapatid, during sa cold war ng us at saka ng us ng around 80 starting ng 80s po mga kapatid and early 90s po mga kapatid makikita niyo yung 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 Cold War po ng 70s, 80s, and early, early, very early 90s po mga kapatid. Makikita mo yung Cold War po ng US at saka ng, ng Russia. And, uh, you know, uh, they are known. This, this, of course, not only they are powerful, they are powerful nations po mga kapatid. And up to now, they're still very powerful po mga kapatid. But not only they're powerful back then, but they're known also of their intelligence they're known of their mga intelligence na agencies mga kapatid we have the KGB for the for the ano po mga kapatid from the russians and we have the CIA dito po sa US po mga kapatid so meron po sila mga spy meron pong spy ang mga CIA sa Russia kung anong gagawin nila anong mga ano. so ito yung magnagre-report kung malapit na bang magdigmaan malapit so ang mga mga Russian spy nandun din po sa mga ano po mga kapatid nandun din po sa sa US so ang US po mga kapatid during those days po mga kapatid naggumawa po sila ng counter terrorism or ano not counter terrorism but counter intelligence unit ngayon mga counter terrorism kasi ang uso ngayon mga terrorist dati ang binabantayan nila spies so meron po silang nagbuo po sila ng counter intelligence agency or unit that is a faction pa rin ng CIA or other na mga na mga ano po mga kapatid maybe FBI maybe Homeland Security sa US po mga kapatid at but that was designed mga kapatid not not to spy out doon po sa ibang bansa kasi kadalasan ang spy pinapadala sa ibang bansa pero sa kanila it is to spy out their own country trying to find out sino po yung mga spies na nakapasok sa kanilang bansa so that is the design of the counter ano po intelligence so if they are the counter intelligence tagaspat sila meron tayong mga madaming counter intelligence dito po mga kapatid dito sa government natin marami tayong mga intelligence na ganun and our our, our government had spent budget for intelligence baka may mga mga uh, mga NPA mga nakapasok or ano din sa government so meron po silang mga mga hindi lang natin alam kung sino po sila po mga kapatid but lahat i think ng government up to this very moment they have their what we call that, that counter intelligence so mapapansin so yun ang ginagawa po ng ginagawa po noon ng mga CIA na part ng counter intelligence unit they are trying to find kung may mga KGB ba doon na nakapasok mga Russian spy or other spies of the world po mga kapatid na pinapakita po nila doon. So yun lang, taga spot lang kung sino mga nag-infiltrators, sino mga nakapasok. That's their duty. Mga kapatid, what we're doing here right now is my infiltration na. We're just providing you some counterintelligence po mga kapatid, exposing these men who already infiltrated in the Christian churches, in the Christian circles, in our pulpits and all of that that are behind these things. We are, we are going to expose the men behind the smoke screen because they their smoke screen po mga kapatid, they're trying to they're trying to hide mga kapatid behind sa kanilang appearance that are harmless because sometimes remember 
ang intelligence is always like this, no? A spy, example, you're a Russian spy going to the US, mga kapatid, kung KJB ka. So you will have a front. You have a front. You have it's what we call po, mga kapatid, a pseudo job. You have a pseudo, ano po, mga kapatid? A pseudo na mga, na mga, mga ginagawa or mga pangalan, mga families. And even some of them are even born ng mga anak na nila. Doon na sila nagkapamilya para hindi lata. At the end is they are spies po mga kapatid. Amen. So they, they hide behind that pseudo family name, pseudo citizenship, pseudo businesses, pseudo na mga ano po mga kapatid. Na kunyari lang yun. That's a smoke screen. And that's how spies have been going po mga kapatid. So mahirap sa isang counterintelligence to discover that dahil po sobrang root talagang hindi mo malalaman na eh, spy pala yan. At dito sa time po natin po mga kapatid, and this also, that's why I, I, I call this men behind the smoke screen because these people are trying to appear to be somebody, to be harmless, to have somebody, but behind it po mga kapatid, amen, there is an, there is a, 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 a subtle attack, an infiltration going on in destroying the faith and the foundation of the Christians that we may not even know it po mga kapatid. And us acting as this counterintelligence, trying to expose this man, trying to expose their ano po mga kapatid, background po mga kapatid, so that we will understand, so that we will be careful next time and, and shun ourselves from these kind of people po mga kapatid, who appear to be good, who appear to be true, who seemingly po mga kapatid, but that is just a smokescreen. Uh, we need to find out who are these men behind this smoke screen they 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 are they 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 smoke screen themselves like i have a dictionary here a lexicon that would help you understand the bible buy this and you will understand the bible that's how their propagandas going on po mga kapatid that's how they did it po mga kapatid i have here a new version an easier to understand version and buy this and you will appreciate and understand the Bible and the Word of God more and more. But ang katotohanan po niyan mga kapatid, there is corruption going on. There is this ano po, perversion going on. But they're good, really good at intelligence. And that's, that's that, this the thing na ginagawa po mga kapatid. But once you know it, yun na po. Yun na po. And this Dalawa, Westcott and Hort. Okay? If you look at their lives, mga kapatid, read history about them, history sometimes record their accomplishment and some their good deeds. Are you listening? But if you look at closer their life, those closely, those are some smoke screens. And one of the accomplishments that they made is they provide, they produce a Westcott and Hort Greek text. The Westcott and Hort Greek text. I don't know if you know the Bible, if you know about the King James issues, or if you know about these Bible issues. I'm, I'm sure that you have heard about Westcott and Hort. Ito ay magkaibigan at partner po mga kapatid at sila po ay nagproduce ng isang Greek text. Ay corrupt Greek text. At lahat ng mga English modern version today is coming from the Westcott and Hort. And a Greek text daw that produces many Bible. Yun daw ang contribution ni Westcott and Hort. Pero that's really, really a uh, very solid cover. Ang tawag, po na, ang tawag po sa mga spy term is, ano ang cover mo? What's their cover? Ah, ano ako? Fisherman. Pero reality, spy. Ano ang cover mo? Ah, I'm a businessman. Pero spy pala yun. Are you listening? Si so, Distong Westcott and Hort, pagbabasahin mo kanilang mga sulat ng ibang tao po, mga kapatid, uh, they're successful and malaki ang contribution sa Christianity. But in reality, 
they are the one who brought in apostasy. Amen. It's Christianity. Now, if you study there, ano po mga kabatid, you could see there, itong si, itong si uh, Brooke Foss Westcourt or BF Westcourt po mga kabatid, Westcourt. Ma, he is really a doubter of biblical miracles. And I have some quotation po dito po mga kapatid, really from, from, their, from their biographies and really from their quotes. And I don't know if I have, I have shared this to you last time po mga kapatid, but let me share this. Let me, let me share my screen. Tingnan ko kung share ko pa ba yung screen. Ha? Wait. Let me share my screen with you. Itong si Westcott and Hort po mga kapatid. Um, saan? Ito, ito. Okay, let me share my screen sa inyo ngayong umaga. So this is Westcott and Hort. So if you look at them po mga kapatid, uh, let's start with Westcott. So first point ko po, Westcott, was a doubter of biblical accounts of miracles. He said, I never read an account of a miracle, but I seem instinctively to feel its improbability and discover somewhat of evidence in the account of it. So he's doubtful. He's doubtful about, um, but can you imagine, and dami kayang mga biblical accounts sa miracle po mga And he's, sabi niya, instinctively to feel its improbability and to discover somewhat of evidence in account of it. Imagine, do you include the Bible by with that, ano po mga kapatid, with their thought? Let's look at another. Sabi po niya, um, uh, let's jump na lang. Sabi niya, as far as I remember, I said very shortly what I hold to be the Lord's coming in my little book on historic faith. I hold very strongly that the fall of Jerusalem was the coming which first fulfilled the Lord's words. And there have been other comings. I cannot doubt that he is coming to us now. Can you imagine that, that this man is not even a right divider, a dispensationalist. That man, po mga kapatid, is what? A millennialist. Na wala nang millennium na darating because he is coming to us now, po mga kapatid. So na fulfill na at second coming na yung fall of Jerusalem sa AD 70 according to them uh, is coming now. And in the evening sabi niya I go with Tom to the wizard. So this is the uh, Arthur Westcott The Life and Letters of Brooke Foss Westcott Volume 1. Ito po yung citation page seven, uh, 32 po mga kapatid. At sabi niya I go with Tom to the wizard but he does not dare perform before us. So you imagine a, a, the one that produced a, a quote-unquote a, a Greek text went to the wizard and sabi niya, new doubts and old superstition and rationalism all trouble me. I cannot determine how much we must believe. Okay, I cannot determine how much we must believe. How much in fact is necessarily required of a member of the church. Also, Grabe, no? So, um, makikita po natin po mga kabadid sa uh, it all troubled them. Hindi niya, ma, wala, walang sigurado itong tao na ito. Siguro pati salvation niya. Sabi niya, so, so wild, so skeptical am I. I cannot yield. He said he's wild, he's skeptical. Another thing, sabi niya, no doubt the language of the rubric is unguarded but it saves us from the error of connecting the presence of Christ glorified humanity with place heaven is a state and not a place you know saan galing ba saan galing ba yung statement na ang langit nandito lang nandito na sa lupa so that is the they don't believe on a literal heaven but they he said that he is a state heaven is a state and not a place so you think about that po and will you trust your your definition coming from that man who don't even believe what the bible says and he said we may reasonably hope by patient and resolute, faithful and united endeavor to find heaven about us here, the glory of our earthly life. So these men believe that ang heaven is in here already in this life. Kaya ganun din siguro ang paniwala niya na ang, ang impyerno nasa lupa lang din na ito. 
So, how could you trust your faith in this kind of belief po mga kapatid? Sabi niya, what about Darwinism? Have you read Darwin? How should I like to talk with you about it? In spite of difficulties, sabi niya, I am inclined to think it answerable. In any case, it is a treat to read such book. Can you imagine? Hindi hindi siya makasagot kay Darwin, parang surrender siya. Maganda siguro ang argumento niya. So anong anong sulat ni Darwin? The theory of evolution po mga kapatid. And hangang-hanga siya, sabi niya, it is a treat to read such a book. Imagine that. So ikaw nagsusulat ka ng mga Greek or mga text kumbaga para sa Biblia tapos sasabihin mo na hindi ka pala talaga naniniwala uh, naniniwala ka pala sa hindi sa theism but rather sa evolution or atheistic na mga ano thoughts sabi niya but the book which has most engaged me is Darwin and whatever may be thought of it it is a book that one is proud to be a contemporary with so kasi sa 1800 tong si Westcott ito si BF Westcott sa 1800 po ang kanyang generation at yun po ang pag pag ano po mga kabatid pag uh, release din ni Darwin sa kanyang book sabi niya contemporary and proud so because their age is the age of reason the Victorian age yung time po na yon that were were knowledge daw ay nagtatas and that is also the dawn of rationalistic approach or humanistic approach yung 1800 it's such really a corrupt that is the gate talaga po mga kabatid ng ano po modernism po mga kapatid even ng pag-aaral that's the key the key ano po na lumabas sila sa old na ano po classic na na pag-aaral nan then pumasok yung age of reason na everything is possible everything is open at this is what we are right now is the result of that generation po mga kapatid sabi niya my feeling is strong that the theory is unsearchable if so it opens up a new period uh, truly it opens a new period sa panahon po nila po mga kapatid yun po talaga ang opening now let, let's look at john horth john anthony horth okay john anthony horth and discover this this man is the westcott and horth ang naglabas ng text po mga kapatid greek text so sabi niya i am inclined to think sabi ni horth i am inclined to think that no such state as eden i mean the popular notion ever existed so he don't believe on garden of eden so to him it's a myth sabi niya and that adam's fall in no degree differed from the fall of each of his descendants as coleridge justly argues so could you imagine na, na hindi man wala naman daw greater degree or condemnation yung pagkahulog ni adan kaysa atin And another thing, sabi niya, quote, let me quote Hort, sabi niya, further I agree with them. Sabi niya, in condemning many leading specific doctrines of the popular theology. Ano yung popular theology? Evangelical seems to me perverted rather than untrue. So could you imagine evangelicals will be called perverted? Ano itong mga evangelicals po mga kapatid? In this time, ang, ang evangelical ngayon, church na. Pero ang evangelicals dati, these are made up of what? Presbyterian, uh, Baptist, Methodist, yung mga old na mga mga 1600 po mga kapatid na mga churches. Tawag niya doon ay perverted. Okay? It is perverted rather than untrue. Ano ba ang mas matindi po? Pervert or untrue? They are just one and the same po mga kapatid. And there are, there are I, sabi niya, I fear still more serious differences between us on the subject of authority and especially the authority of the Bible. Bakit? Ano bang tinutukoy ng mga evangelical churches? I'm not talking of the evangelical churches now. Ano bang mga authority po ng example, Baptist, Methodist, yung mga panahon na yun? Is the Bible is the final authority? The Bible is the sole authority and there's no other. They don't submit to the authority of the Pope. They they believe that the the Bible is the the only authority of or in all matters in faith and practice po mga kapatid. So kaya sabi niya we I don't I differ with them with Bible authority because itong tao na ito na naglabas ko no ng Greek text mismo na ang Bible na kanyang pinoproduce po mga kapatid ay anong ginawa nila? Hindi niya authority po mga kapatid. Sabi niya If you make a decided conviction of the absolute infallibility of the New Testament, I fear I could not join you. So this man don't believe that we, there is this infallibility of revelation and inspiration 
And text in the New Testament, sabi niya, sabi niya, I fear I could not join you. So he doesn't believe that the Bible is free of errors. He doesn't believe that the Bible is inerrant, infallible, perfect word of God. Sabi niya, I fear I could not join you. What about that po mga kapatid? And sabi niya, another additional ni Hort, but I am not able to go as far as you in asserting the absolute infallibility of a canonical writing. So yun yung difference niya. I don't want to go as far. Para sa kanya, extreme daw na maniwala yung absolute infallibility. Kaya yun yung source. Ito yung tatay ng mga, ng mga, ng mga pastors and mga ministers of God na nagsasabi na wala ng perfect Bible ngayon, wala ng inspired, preserved Bible ngayon sa original lang. So ito yung mentality ni Hort po mga kapatid. Hindi po yun bago dati pa yan po mga kapatid. So he could not say that I have the perfect, inspired, inerrant, preserved word of God in my hand. He could not say that, po mga kapatid. That is hort. And no wonder, kaya papalit-palit ang version after version after version after version. Bakit? Because they, they, they do that easily because they think that the Bible is not really perfect. That's why ginagawa nilang benta, ginagawa nilang kung ano pang mga pinapalabas nila po mga kapatid. Now, another thing, another na sinasabi ni Hort. So, sabi niya, now, if there be a devil, sabi niya, he cannot merely bear a corrupted and marred image of God. He must be wholly evil, his name evil, his every energy evil and act evil. So, that is true. That is who the devil is. Everything about him is evil. And he does not bear the image of God because he is evil. Pero sabi niya, sabi niya, Would it not be a violation of divine attributes of the Word of God to be actively support of such nature as that? Can you imagine? He still doubted the nature of the of the devil. Maybe he is thinking that the devil is not purely evil. Maybe there is something good in the devil, and that the devil can still be saved. Oh, I I I know that doctrine. There is this doctrine of universal reconciliation that the devil will be saved. Yun po, yung, yun po yung mga problema po mga kapatid. Baka dito sa kanila galing itong mga mentality. But that was an Augustinian mga kapatid theology that ma- maliligtas po ang Jablo sa later on. No, it's wrong. It's, he's purely evil. Amen. He is he's the representation of pure evil and that's the devil po mga kapatid. Why should you doubt that when that's what the Bible says? He is an adversary of God. Amen. The arch enemy of God. The exact opposite of who God is. And you, could you imagine, siguro po mga kapatid, may sympathy pa to sa jablo, ito pong tao po na ito. Now, another thing na sinabi niya, let me quote Hort again. Sabi niya, I think Maury's letter to me sufficiently showed that we have no sure knowledge respecting the duration of future punishment. So this man don't believe in a future punishment. This man maybe don't believe on the that you will be eternally in the lake of fire if you are not saved. And sabi niya, and that word eternal has a far higher meaning than merely material one of excessively long duration. Extinction always grates against my mind as something impossible po mga kapatid. So yun ang problema po ng, ng, ng ano po na ito. Wala siyang sure knowledge respecting to the duration of the future punishment po mga kapatid. Sabi niya, certainly in my case, it proceeds from no personal dread. When I have been living most godlessly, I have never been able to frighten myself with visions of a dis- distant future even while I held the doctrine. Now, so nung siya pa ay unsaved ko, no? sabi niya, um, godless pa siya, hindi daw siya natatakot sa mga future judgment. Now, okay lang siguro yun kung wala pa siyang alam. Now, nag-profession na may alam na daw siya ngayon, even when I held the doctrine. So even kung alam niya na may impyerno, even niya na may alam niya na ano po mo, I held the doctrine, hindi pa rin ako natatakot. So siguro, amen, kung ganun po mga kapatid, makikita po natin. Okay? So an additional na sinasabi ni Westcott po mga kapatid, ay ni Hort po mga kapatid, sabi niya, the fact is, I do not see how God's justice can be satisfied without every man suffering in his own person the full penalty for his sins po mga kapatid. 
And he said, certainly nothing can be more unscriptural than the modern limiting of Christ bearing our sins and suffering to his death. But indeed, that is only one aspect of almost universal heresy. So this man doesn't believe that Christ is the only one who bore our sins and suffering when he died on the cross of Calvary and buried and rose again the third day. He said that there is also necessity for man to bear that suffering of his own sin, not just Christ. According to this man, that it is what Christ did for us is just one thing, but it was not sufficient. We needed to bear the full penalty of our own sin. So, yun po yung problem po ng tao po na ito po mga kapatid. Sabi niya, I cannot confess. I have no repugnance to the primitive doctrine of ransom paid to Satan, though neither I am prepared to give full assent to it, but I can see no other possible form in which the doctrine of ransom is is at all tenable. Sabi niya, let me, uh, ang akin pong emphasis, sabi niya dito, Anything is better than the notion of ransom paid to the Father. So I confess, sabi niya, itong mga primitive doctrine na sinasabi, paid, paid to Satan, that God was paying to Satan. Actually, of course, hindi naman tayo nagsasabi na God was paying to Satan. Amen. Pero tinit, ang, ang connection niya dito po mga kabatid, that man should pay for his own sins. Amen. In context ng kanyang gustong ipaabot. Now, By the way, you see this? You see this men, Westcott and Hort, mga kapatid, na makikita po natin? As you see this, Westcott and Hort, itong, ito po, ito pong dalawa po na ito. Kung if you look at their history po, mga kapatid, parang madaki ang contributions po nila sa Christianity. Pero if you look at their biography, their life, mga kapatid, smokescreen lang yun. It's just a mere smokescreen. Pero ang realidad po mga kapatid, they're hiding behind it. At yun po sila. At yun ang pre-introduce nila. Kaya imagine kung anong klasing just think, kung anong klasing work iyon na produce ng ganitong klasing tao na may ganitong klasing belief. Amen. Naisip nyo ba yun? Kung anong, ano ang magiging resulta ng work ng Ganitong klasing tao po mga kapatid na may ganitong klasing belief. Hindi unimaginable po mga kapatid na makikita po natin yung mga bagay na yun. Just think of that. At ito po yun, ito po yun mga kapatid na makikita po natin. Now, let me add po mga kapatid another thing. Let me add another thing. Let me let me share my screen again. Saan ba yung aking Okay, let me share my screen. Um, once again, Okay, let's look at number three. Si Henry Little Scott po mga kapatid. Si Henry Little. May kita po natin dyan si Henry Little po mga kapatid as, as we... Saan ba yung... Okay. So as we see that po mga kapatid, um, ito po, siya yung, siya yung pinaka... As I, what I have told you, nung men behind the... The, I, I, yung from the beginning sinabi kong insider secret or saan galing po mga lexicon siya yung unang nagproduce sila ni Scott okay uh, ang nagproduce ng kauna-unahang Greek English lexicon so pinakita ko sa inyo sila ang unang nagproduce ng kauna-unahang English lexicon po mga kapatid sa atin ay sa dito po sa history So ano pong meron sa kanila po mga kapatid na makikita po natin? Ano pong meron si kay Henry Little? Take note, sabi niya. I regret, take note on this. Okay, Di, ang nagsulat nito si Little, sabi niya, I regret, quoted from Henry L. Thompson, Henry George Little, London. Okay, and page 27. Sabi niya, I regret, wrote Little in 1853 that's in 1853 to find how much better the lexicon might be okay so imagine nagproduce siya ng work na may regret pero yung work niya nagiging source po mga kabatid very important source ng mga lexicons 
And sabi niya, I find many, many errors. An ending task of what? An ending task of correcting. Wow. The mother of all harlot ng mga lexicon, ang mga strongs concordance, ang tires, ang vines. Diyan kumukuha. Pero sabi mismo ng source, I find many, many errors. An ending task of correcting. Ano nangyayari po mga kapatid? Ang tanong, alam ba ng mga sumusunod sa kanya at nagko-quote sa kanya po mga kapatid na may mali? At saan ang mali? Yun ang mahirap mga kapatid. And we trust doon po kumukuha. Now let's go to this tire, Henry Tire. Bilisan po natin. Si Henry Tire po mga kapatid. Let's look at Henry Tire. At uh, very known po siya, sa niya sa kanya pong sa kanya pong Greek lexicon, tires Greek lexicon if you if you have them po mga kapatid. And uh, si Tire, he was a unitarian. So ibig sabihin he doesn't believe on the Trinity, he's a unitarian. And on such he denied the deity of Christ. He don't believe that Christ is God, the Trinity and the blood atonement. He don't believe on the sufficiency also of the blood atonement. So makikita po natin. So that is Tyre. So he is the source of the Greek, Hebrew. Uh, he's the source of a Greek lexicon. Uh, when you quote his ano, magiging bias siya pagdating sa deity of Christ because he don't believe on that Christ is God. He don't believe on the Trinity. So yun ang problema po mga kabatid. And sabi dito, Tyre authored a Greek English lexicon that begins in the preface with a warning of his heresy by the publisher. So ang publisher mismo nagsasabi po mga kapatid kung ano yung mga teachings niya po mga kapatid. And Tyre used the corrupt Greek text. And he used what? What corrupt Greek text? The Westcott and Hort po mga kapatid. And Tyre was a member of the corrupt American Standard Version. Look at American Standard Version and the Westcott and Hort Revised Version Committee. The Westcott and Hort Revised Version Committee. Let's take note po mga kabatid. So that's it. Makikita po natin. Next, Tyre used the context of perverse pagan Greeks to determine the word meanings for his lexicon. So you see, he used the pagan Greeks to determine the word meanings for his lexicon. So bumalik po sila doon sa mga bagay na yon. And Tyre po mga kapatid, lexicon underlies many of the definition in other lexicons and dictionaries such as Vine's Expository Dictionary and the Defined King James Bible. So could you imagine naka-infiltrate siya sa Defined King James Bible? Kanino po yun? Sulat po yun ng King James Advocate, mga kapatid. Sulat ng mga King James Advocate. At ang nangyayari, hindi nila alam na naka-infiltrate naka itong mga itong mga ano na ito mga men na ito behind sa smoke screen so in the first place unitarian deny the deity of Christ wala na eh hindi yan kauri delikado na yan po mga kapatid eh at yun ang problema po diyan mga kapatid next po mga kapatid ang ating pinakasikat po mga kapatid nakakilala po natin si James Strong of Strong's Concordance is that really Strong's Strong's Concordance or weak Concordance, sabi nga nila. Akala, ni, akala mo strong, pero weak pala. So, sino si Strong Concordance? Number one. Ah, si Strong Concordance. Sino si James Strong? Number one. Strong was a member of the Westcott and Hort Revised Version Committee ng, ng uh, Revised Version po mga kapatid of 1881 and worked in masterminding this corrupt version. So, he is one of the translator of that Revised Version. And what else? Strong was also a member of the American Standard Version Committee. So ASV, kasunod po, finally published in 1901. Yung isa, 1881, then 1901 po mga kabatid. It said that Jesus Christ was a creature, not the creator. So this was their teaching, just like kay Tyre po mga kabatid. On these committees, Strong joined the Unitarians. So like Tyre, a child molester, Vohan followers of Luciferian, si Blavatsky, and the horde of Bible critics, si S.R. Driver, who together changed nearly 10,000 words of the text. So yun po yung mga kaibigan po niya. 
and Strong's Concordance definition are often the very words of these corrupt versions and also the Quran. Kaya makikita po natin as we go on later on po mga kabaden. But corrupt versions. Just think though, revised version, dyan, dyan galing yung mga English definition ni Strong's mga kabaden. So when you read, when you, when you let the King James be defined by Strong's, when you let, let the King James word be defined by Strong's, you know what you just did? You just let the revised version define the King James. So ang naging final authority mo is now the revised version. It's not anymore. It's no longer the AV. So ang gagawin mo na lang, ba't pupunta ka pa kay Strong's? Pupunta ka na lang doon sa revised version. I-compare mo na lang doon. Kung hindi mo naintindihan sa King James, pupunta ka na lang doon sa revised version. Parehas lang kasi lahat ng mga English definitions niya, doon din naman galing. Isa din naman siya sa mga translators committee po doon. Po mga kapatid. And yet, churches right now heavily rely on this James Strong. And most of their Bible colleges concerning the Greek and the Hebrew po mga kapatid, doon kumukuha alo sa kanya mga definitions. Another thing, Strong also gathered his definition from Jesse News, a corrupt Hebrew lexicon. His work also accesses the corrupt lexicon of Little Scott, Thayer, Brown, Driver, and Briggs. So lahat po, kinukuha po lahat ng iyon. Diyan po din ang source ng kanya pong mga. And Strong's Greek text is not always that which underlies the King James Bible. It's not just not always, but most of the time po mga kapatid, it's not underlying the King James Bible. Because mga kapatid, it was mga kapatid, It was really the underlying text for the revised version. And Strong's various definition may, may not give anywhere near a literal translation of the Greek. Yes, that's true. Hindi man nga literal translation of the Greek. Kaya, what is that? That's the weakness of these lexicons po mga kapatid. Okay? Some of the latest editions of Strong's Concordance are not even Strong's original. Meron po ngayong new Strong's Concordance and not even part of the original. So may mga nagre-revise na. But who cares, mga kapatid? Kung may new, mga kapatid. And even the old, we should not read. Amen. Now, bigyan ko kayo ng some examples, then we will end in, in the some examples. For example, si James Strong. Sabi niya, John 9, 9.38. Okay? Take note, sabi ng Bible, Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen me, seen him, And he it is that speaketh with thee. In verse 38, And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Verse 39, And Jesus said, For judgment came I into this world, that they that see not may see, and they that see may become blind, those of the Pharisees who were with him. Now look at, look at their, their comment, commentary po mga kabatid, that the Greek word denotes an act of reverence whether paid to a creature as here, take note, as here, or to the Creator. I'm just reading the footnotes dito sa gilid. This is how they comment, mga kapatid. Anong sabi niya? The Greek word denotes that act of reverence. So there's the act of reverence in this. But whether paid to a creature or to the Creator, pero paid to the creature as here. Who is Christ dito sa kanya? Creature. He's a creature to them, po mga kabalit. So do you see that? You don't, we don't know that. We just thought that his, his work is helpful, po mga kabalit. But how could you now trust his word if this is his belief? You know what he believes will always affect his work. Mga kabalit. And ito po, ito po. Ah. Look at the King James Bible. Look at the Strong's Concordance in, in dito sa gitna. And look at James Strong's also and Tyre's American Standard Version of 1901. Look at that, how they, ito po. For example, sa King James Bible, ang paggagamit sa King James, Godhead. Sa kanila, divinity. Sa American Standard Version, divinity. Parehas lang. Dito, one is your master, even Christ. Ang kang paggagamit ni Strong, ibig sabihin, teacher. Sa kanya, one is your teacher, sa American Standard Version. Teacher. Small T pa. So ordinary. Dito, charity. Paggagamit yan, love, love. And you know the charity and love, although they're both love po mga kapatid, but in, in, in specific definition, they are not the same. 
Now dito, follow sa King James Bible. Sa kanila, imitate. Imitate. Kasi by the way, wala po silang word na charity pala, puro love. So how could you now separate charity from love? So sa atin ay charity ang paggalagay. Sabi niya, follow or imitate. Imitate. So pag iba yung follow. Malaki ang difference ng follow at imitate. When you follow, that includes obedience. And that includes yieldedness. That includes submission. When you imitate, mga kabutid, fake. Kaya nga may mga imitations eh. Okay? So it's fake, mga kabutid, not genuine. Yun lang po ang ibig sabihin. But you can follow genuinely. But you could not imitate genuinely. Because imitation will always be imitation. Amen. You need to uh, understand that. Dito, temperance. Sa kanila, self-control. Self-control. Ang point ko, truly, oh, kung pupunta ka, ang definition ni Strong, dito sa isang bagay, sabi niya, self-control. Ganon din ang pagka-translate sa American Standard Version, eh, self-control po, mga kapatid. So, too superstitious sa King James, very religious. Kasi nila, very religious. Ang point natin, parehas mo yan. So, you see that? Ang i-define ni Strong's, kung ano din yung sinasabi ng American Standard Version. Ba't kailangan mo pa pupunta kay Strong's pala? Punta ka na lang sa American Standard Version. So, balik ka na lang sa modern version. Kung gusto mo pala. Pero look at this, heresy. Pag gamit ng Bible, heresy. Para sa kanila, party. Party. Ano, anong party po ba, kapatid? Ano, anong, anong understanding mo sa party ngayon at heresy? Magkalayo po, mga kapatid. Pero parehas po sila. Ito, curious. Sa kanila dito, pagkalagay, magical. Magical. So, ma mahilig to sa mga magic-magic. Alam kong bakit. Galing to sa, ano eh, Westcott and Hort eh. Bumibisit daw sila ng wizard eh. Amen. Bottomless pit sa atin. Abyss sa kanila. Abyss. Anong galing po yun? Hell sa atin. Sa kanila. Hades. Hades. Kaya nga, hindi ka makahanap ng word na hell sa kanila eh. Hades na sa kanila. O sa atin, devils sa kanila. Demonic being or deity or demons. Kaya wala kang magkikita ng word na devil. Demons ang pinapalit nila. Sa atin, Lucifer. Sa kanila, morning star. Ito, day star. That's why you could not use the, you could not find the word Lucifer in their versions po, mga kapatid. Amen. Only in the King James Bible. So, that's, that's, that's how corrupt po, mga kapatid. Contin continuation. Sa King James Bible, ito sa American Standard Version. For example, and 1 John 4.3, ito yung, ito yung verse. And every spirit that confesseth not Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. So this is a very strong verse, mga kapatid. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ, okay, that He is God coming to the flesh is not of God. He is God manifest in the flesh. And is not of God. That's a very strong verse na mapakita sa 1 John chapter number 4 verse 3 sa King James Bible but sa kay American Standard Version sabi niya every spirit that confesseth not Jesus is not of God that's very different because this one po mga kapatid it tells us of the incarnation of Christ that God manifested in the flesh and the word was made flesh dito tinanggal po yun po mga kapatid sa Colossians 1:2 look at Colossians 1:2 The Bible, the King James Bible, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Kay James Strong is one of the the translator committee of American Standard Version. Our Father, tinanggal yung and the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is that, po mga kabuted? That's a conspiracy there, and that's the result, mga kabuted, of their belief. And you have to observe that. And the King James Bible, Ephesians three nine. Look at. God who created all things by Jesus Christ. God created all things by Jesus Christ. Who is the creator here in this verse? By Jesus Christ. Dito, look at verse 9. Dito sa American Standard Version. God who created all things. Nawala yung by Jesus Christ. What is that po mga kapatid? Because of their belief. Because of the belief of dire and strong. And in Ephesians 3.14, look at that. And I bow my knee, sabi ni Paul, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I bow my knees unto the Father. And what is omitted, removed, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi that is a specific po mga update. Galatians 4.7, look at an heir of God. We are an heir of God. Through Christ, sa kanila, an heir of God. 
the true Christ was removed. Is that important? Yes, it is, po mga kapatid. So again, what is that? That's a result of their position. Now think of Westcott and Hort. Having these things, mga kapatid, think of their, their work. Think of Henry Little, re, knowing what they believe, po mga kapatid. Ito yung outcome, example po mga kapatid. In Galatians 5.6, look at this. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything. But ito sa Galatians 5.6, for neither is circumcision anything. O anong nawala? Sa lahat pa naman ng word ang tatanggalin, for in Jesus Christ. Hindi ba yan sadya? Of course, that is deliberate, mga kabadid, na ni-remove. Why? Because of their stated doctrine. Because of what they believe. They're Unitarian. They don't believe on the deity of Christ. Amen. In 1 Timothy 2.7, sabi niya, I speak the truth in Christ. Pero pagdating po sa modern version, I speak the truth. Parang pinagtripan, tinatanggal yung word na Christ palagi. Amen. 1 John 5.13, look at, These things have I written unto you, King James, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. So how do you know that you have eternal life? That you believe on the name of the Son of God. Pero sa modern version, sa kay Strong, sa ASV po mga kapatid, American Standard Version, these things have I written unto you that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That, that, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God was omitted, was taken away. That's the problem. Revelation 14.14, it tells us of the Son of Man, capital S, Son of Man. And that's Jesus Christ. Ang kanila, Son of Man, small s. So ibig sabihin, Jesus Christ was an ordinary Son of Man. In Revelation 1.13, the Son of Man, once again, is in capital S because it tells us of a deity, bag capital. Dito, a son, small s. Hindi da, but a son. A son. Hindi the son. Because isa lang ang the son of men. Eh. The, the one that it, uh, name, bear the title is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ang tawag sa kanila, a son of men. One of the son of men. Kalaking problema po mga kapatid. Laking problema. So, I'll stop there po mga kapatid. Lumampas na nga pala tayo. And um, I'm showing you these things po mga kapatid to, to warn you that these things are real and ito po mga bagay po na ito po mga kapatid that we should be aware and we should na pagmatyag po mga kapatid at dapat nating matutunan na meron pong totoong infiltration at meron po na nangyayari na going on po sa atin po mga kapatid and we're doing this as counterintelligence that we have to expose those who already infiltrated and tell you their works quotation by their actual works na ginagawa po mga kapatid. And hindi po ito light issue. Hindi po ito magaan or mababaw lang na issue. Be but this is a serious issue because this is a direct attack on the Word of God. And we need, amen, to be vigilant. We need to take care of our churches and just hold on continually to this book. And trust this book alone po, mga kapatid. Let's not just let this we mean, mga kapatid, with their, with their intentions, destroy the faith na na-establish natin sa salita ng Diyos. Amen. So, hindi pa tayo tapos sa infiltration po, mga kapatid. Next week po, mga kapatid, Lord willing, atin pong i-discuss kung paano natin i-address ang mga Bible critics na ito, paano natin Paano po natin i ano po mga kabatid i, i uh, paano tayo mag-respond pag may mga tanong at pag may mga ano so titingnan po natin kung anong uh, mangyayari po mga kabatid. and that will help you next week and we'll ha we'll add more exposures exposition uh, about these men po mga kabatid, as we go on ahead dito po sa infiltration so that's the men behind the smoke screen i'm just giving you the representative of the many a few representative of the many of these people. But just to cite some example na meron talagang infiltration going on. Infiltration in the, mean, in the, in the, in the sense, mga kapatid, that people, Christians, are reading their works and relying in their works, not even knowing the errors 
of it, not even knowing the background of these people. And that's why when they read their commentary, they will read, they will believe the commentary rather than what their Bible says. Okay, yun ang danger. That's why it is teaching them, mga kapatid, it is teaching them ng unbelief po, mga kapatid. And may God help us po, mga kapatid. And may God um, um, teach us more about this. And hope to see you tomorrow. We will talk about another areas ng rightly dividing tomorrow. The word of truth po, mga kapatid. May God help us as we as we learn more the word of God. Thank you for those who join us dito po sa meeting room. And thank you also dito po sa FB Live. And God bless everyone. God bless po sa ating lahat. And have a good day. And we're